Welcome back to the show, Julia. That was a wonderful interview. Wow, you guys mix dance with sports. Very informative. That was really nice. I like the way you tied in Tim and, and your own experience with with the coach. So that was that was a great interview. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Jay. So stick around. I'd like you to stick around. What we want to do now is we want to change course a little bit. And I want to introduce on the show veteran and founder and CEO, Jim Spear for Mobility Support Solutions, all the way from Seattle. Jim, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. And again, thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. So I was talking before uh, in our uh, our intro about how unique and innovative this is. So rather than me explain your company platform, why don't you explain to our listeners, and I'm sure myself and Julia are going to have some great follow-up questions for you, Jim. Sure. Yeah, we uh, what we do is we provide for the mobility challenge community something that um, wasn't there until 2013 when we put it together. And what it amounts to is it, most every other emergency roadside package that's out there, whether it's CAA or in the US, it's AAA or your own insurance or whatever, is really only about 50% of the solution. What we do is we provide 100% of the solution. And what we do is we not only pick up the vehicle, the van most of the time with the tow truck, we send an accessible vehicle at the same time so that the people are not left on the side of the road because that's really how this whole thing started was I heard a story from a vet that said he was left on the side of the road when he had this, you know, towing um, emergency. Share that. Yeah. Share that story, Jim. Cause I was quite, quite, uh, quite interesting and, and really it sort of put the pieces together what you're talking about today. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm a, as you said, I'm a disabled vet. Actually, I was at my own appointment at the VA hospital in Seattle. And uh, I was sat next to a guy that was in a wheelchair and missing an arm and leg. And, and I've never been afraid to talk with anybody. So um, I just started chatting with him. And most of the time when, when you get conversations going, you know, it's about what do you do for a living? And, and so that, that came up. And I told him that I was in the emergency roadside business with insurance company. And he says, oh, I had the opportunity to use that kind of a product a few weeks ago. And I said, oh, how did it work for you? He said, well, it worked great on my van. But he said, they left me on the side of the freeway. And I was thought. Uh, how can I do that? I mean, that what, is, what, do you, what do you mean? And he says, well, I, I'm not going to ride on a flatbed truck in my van, and I can't get up in the cab because i got a 400-pound chair. So he said, I had to wheel myself off the freeway of about a mile and, a, and then and got to a strip mall and waited for my wife for a couple of hours to come and pick me up. And I went, wow, you've got to be kidding me. And he went off to his appointment, but there was another uh, military guy sitting in front of us. I knew he was, he was a Marine because he had a Marine Corps T-shirt on. And he says, hey, I overheard your guys' conversation. He says, that's my greatest fear. Well, right away, that surprised me because Marine says fear. Mm. That doesn't make any sense. I said, what are you talking about? And he says, well, I've got a wife and three small children. And he says, I think I can pretty much spend for myself, but what do I do with them? And I went, man, I, I just never even thought about this. So I went back to the office and Googled it and found that there was nothing, absolutely nothing that provided for this kind of a circumstance in disabled life. And I thought, oh, man. And so when I when I went to my fulfillment company, I said, look, I'd like to do something for veterans and provide this kind of a service. Can you help me put it together? And they said, sure. Well, in process of vetting all this the material, I found that there was a, in the U.S. Census in 2010, there was a box in the on the census that I don't even remember seeing, but it asked, were you are you mobility challenged in any way? Mm. 50, 54 million people check that box. That's 20 percent of our population. And I went, oh, man, that's the most underserved market I've ever experienced in my 50, almost 55 years of selling. You know? and, and so I I quickly put it together. It took about six months. We hit the market in 2013. And I, I it, it's been an amazing ride. I, I to provide the service that we have, we have hundreds of thousands of people that are on our program. Um, and to hear their stories is really amazing because some of them live in such compromise. You know, they have problems with their body temperature. They have all kinds of things. We've got to get to them really quick. And so that's what we do. We, we provide that. And plus other, you know, bells and whistles that 
that make our program very unique um, in the sense that uh, just providing for the disabled community. I love the way you I love the way you describe the story because I just want to sort of add to it because if you're if you don't if you're not in the game, it's hard to relate and it's hard to find solutions. So I'll give an example on our end is there was a committee that was putting up a um, accessible wheelchair uh, panel on the wall, right? But the people that were doing it, none of the panel, and nothing against them, none of them were in a wheelchair. So they didn't think that the panel has to be low enough so the person that's in the wheelchair can hit it. And they put it up too high. So I had my one of, one of our staff members go into the washroom and they said, Jay, I see this all the time because the people that are not relatable, they they, they miss it because they, they don't know. But so we had to tell them, hey, can you move the, the button down a little bit? Because the people that are sitting in a wheel, they can't reach the button. So it's kind of like what you said, like, well, what do the people do after you pick up the car? Like, where do those people go? But so unless you're experiencing it, you miss it sometimes. So really, thank you so much for, for sharing that, Jim. Uh, Julie, do you have maybe a question you'd like to jump in and ask Jim with? I do have a question for Jim. Jim, do you do you know if there are any services like yours in Northern Ontario? Well, we provide the service. We're, uh, we're the only ones in Canada also. We're the only ones in the U.S. I don't have any competition. I haven't had for eight years. And so we provide in the U.S. and Canada, we cover the whole area. So it might take a little bit to get to Timmins where you're from, but yeah. but but we'll get there uh, as soon as we can. And I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't have 10 feet of snow, but most of the time you have lots of snow. So um, I just don't want to fight the bears. That's all I, you know, we'll send somebody <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question well you know we'll be more than happy to help you out and spread the word up here because i think what you're doing is a is a fantastic service and and it's so needed like you said 54 million people in the states who are mobility challenged i know we don't have 54 million but i know we have a few can uh, i ask if, you if, sorry if the numbers are right though if the numbers are right you you have 20 percent just like we do of, of course oh yeah for sure we do for sure we do 100 percent. i can tell you that right by our own data that there's a lot of people up here disabled who would need your service. Can I ask you now, how did the, uh, how was the reception regarding the VA or did you let them know that you're doing this? Are they supporting you? Do they love it? Thumbs up or they don't know about it too much? Well, I, the way that we've been operating up to this point is that we've been dealing with mobility van dealers. We've just now pushed into the retail market the 1st of March. And, um, and, and it's going well, things are going well there. But as far as direct, application by the VA, they have an indirect way that would they associate with us and that our program is put on the every van actually with the second largest uh, um, manufacturer in the world. Uh, they put it on every van just just as a courtesy to the customer. They want to make sure the customer is taken care of and then they give them the opportunity to really buy a couple more years if they want to do a couple more years. In the VA system in the States, what they do is they provide the van and the conversion for the van. And then they provide for our, our program at the same time. So wow, that's, that's wonderful. And I understand you are nationwide, right? So you can people can co contact you in every state, all, all 50 states or whatever, and, and in Canada. And yeah. uh, can, now, was there any other services that your clients or our listeners that should know about that are attached to the, your main service, which is obviously accessibility pickup, I guess you could call it a little bit? or Yeah. Yeah, we do have a few other things actually. Um, when it comes to when it comes to the the conversion piece, anything that's electronic on it or electric on it, if you have a problem with it, we can we'll we will pay one hour's worth of travel time or or technicians time to be able to troubleshoot that for you. Most of the time, it's a reset button. We're finding it's about ninety percent of the time it's a reset button. Okay. But when it's not, we'll pay, we'll pay for a, an hour's worth of travel for a technician to get there. The same thing is the same thing is true with the wheelchair or scooter that they might have. If they have a problem with their wheelchair or scooter, we'll do the same kind of thing. Just call us when you're a member of our program. They call us, and we will we will have a technician get back to them or come and take care of them. And then now, a couple of things yeah. that we do, if I could add to it, one of the a yeah. couple more things to do. It's it's almost impossible for a mobility challenged person that's in a chair to change their own tire. 
so if they have a flat, and by the way, which is something that's unique, I'm finding in the mobility community, the vans most of the time don't have a spare nowadays because of they have to drop the bottom and there's no room for it. So they're sitting out there with a flat tire. And the only way that we then we come in, we get involved, we tow them to the nearest repair facility, which would be a tire store, and they get their tire repaired. We pay for that repair up to $25. And if if it needs the tire needs to be replaced, we'll replace it up to $150. Wow, that's very nice. That's a very nice stuff. Now I'm gonna ask a maybe a I don't know, just a viewer question, but do you have to be disabled to use your services? No. There you no. go. Right? You don't have to be disabled, right? You can just no, be no. an able body on the side of the road. Yeah, you could be. I mean, it, I, I just think about the soccer moms. That's a great question, by the way, Jay. I, I think about the soccer moms or the older folks my, like myself, you know. I, my wife, or another thing, my wife would not get up in a tow truck. I don't know about yours, but my wife wouldn't get up in a tow truck, you know. Yeah. So we would send an accessible vehicle if they wanted it. It's not just for the disabled community. It's for the whole community at large. Yeah, I I, just, I figured it would be like you're not going to cater just to the you're cater to anybody anybody who needs help or support. I'm sure you're there now. If people want to, so because I think this is a great service that you're offering, Jim. Is there anything that the channel can do to further support this across the nation, across Canada, across the world? Can we can we loan any more support for you guys? Well, I, I sent you our website. And I'm just just if you could just use that website and send it out to whoever. Okay. Um, and all they do is they, they get on the website, take care of everything there, decide which program that they want, and away they go. And can what you, give, does, can you give out the website as we speak? Can you give it out? Yeah, it's mobilityroadsideassistance.com. Mobilityroadsideassistance.com. And I know because earlier you are talking, you are a veteran, and I know you uh, deal with one of our associates in the U.S., Anna Maria, from uh, our Veterans to Prosperity. So if there's anything we can also do to support the veterans, um, please do let us know. as It's our uh, dear to our heart. And uh, I really want to thank you for coming on to Jay, uh, today, Jim. We love Seattle. Uh, Julie, before we let Jim go, do you have any more questions for him? Or I do. I love that. I would love to let my MP and MPP know about your company. And it is great to hear that people with mobility challenges can count on Jim's company for support. Thanks for making a difference and keeping people safe. Thanks, Julie. Thank you, Jim. We really appreciate everybody for tuning in today. Again, if you want to find out more information about Jim, again, one more time, Jim, the website? Yes, mobilityroadsideassistance.com. Thank you so much. And if people want to find out more information regarding the channel, you can go to www.thedisabilitychannel.ca. Julie, really thank you for having me on your show today. I really appreciate it. Loved our guests. Very informative. Lots of fun. Until next time, what is it, Julie? Well, that's the end of our show today. Thank you so much for tuning in with Jay and Di and our amazing guests, Christelle Chow and Jim Spear. Jay, do you have any final thoughts? Just stay safe. That's all. Just stay safe out there, everybody.